So it's 2.40 p.m. exactly. Wow. And the sound is working. Over the weekend, I was alerted to pending public comments for the Federal Reserve in addition to information regarding the Federal Register. I'm going to be honest with you. The level of criminality that the federal government is engaged in and the level of criminality that is being engaged through both the Federal Reserve and the Department of Treasury, including through the Office of Foreign Asset Control, is so significant that it is not only psychologically traumatizing to try to keep track of it, but it's also insulting because during this time frame, there were plenty of other options and potential alternatives to actually representing the interest of people and what people need. But for whatever reason, those have been allowed to be cast off or ignored while other interests seem to be prioritized that don't really serve anything close to the best interest of the people. And not only that, even as an individual, there just doesn't seem to be much merit in attempting to invest time and energy into acknowledging its authority. However, it still has a disproportionate influence over our livelihoods. Right now, today, there is the ending of a public comment period concerning private flood insurance. I've already stated on the record how today I am renewing my efforts and will be refiling criminal charges. And those criminal charges are going to include, among other things, charges that were already put before the courts concerning the alleged drawdown on insurance through the Housing and Urban Development Agency in connection with a request for assistance via FEMA after an alleged emergency connected to Hurricane Harvey. There's a variety of other matters related to that I will not expound upon right now. But I will acknowledge that last year I found a previous public comment through the Federal Reserve specifically discussing matters related to flood insurance, including alleged private flood insurance that was provided by an organization based out of the state of New York. I have other videos uh, that correlate with another kind of time frame. If I'm not mistaken, it has to do with an actual emergency situation that I understood was at work connected to um, the alleged floodplain requirements and changes in conjunction with policy concerning the floodplain as well as FEMA. That was at the end of August. I will check and make sure. But one of the things that was very notable about that is that it mentions specifically 24 di different jurisdictions that were going to be subjected to changes regarding the floodplain and or uh, emergency uh, assistance in connection with the floodplain. And my concern is that, well, pretty much what was being set up is exactly what I'm seeing today, which is manipulation of actual policy concerning safety and welfare of the people as made public, if one knows how to find it, through what is alleged to be official process associated with the federal government, but with the intent to defraud the people and to visit other forms of violations of our constitutional rights, perhaps even insofar as they may serve the interest of those that might identify themselves or be identified as enemies of the United States, and hence the people of the United States are impacted. There were specifically 24 jurisdictions that were acknowledged in that Federal Register notice, specifically regarding, if I'm not mistaken, King County, Louisiana. Well, what we have right now is a Federal Register public, uh, I'm sorry, a Federal Reserve public comment period regarding changes concerning the private flood insurance plan that is divided into 24 questions. It says right here that it concerns 24 proposed questions. Your deadline is for today. I'm not going to provide a comment on that any more than I already have, but I will acknowledge today is 10 days after a public comment period ended concerning another matter related to stress testing of banks. 
I've already remarked previously on my understanding of this stress testing of banks, specifically my concern that the stress testing of banks is actually a way to visit illegal liens on people that have been identified as assets connected to those banks, including connected to accounts that might have some sort of high level uh, volatility or some sort of high risk activity. And so when they stress test the banks, what they actually do is they impact the livelihoods of people that would otherwise be identified as assets of those banks or individuals associated with who are banking with those banks, regardless of whether or not we personally even have an account or we personally have even been able to do business with that bank. Not only that, but the stress testing and the metrics associated with previous stress testing reports have been directly connected to illegal activities. There's a specific bank that uh, has been uh, has undergone stress testing for several years because of its desire to participate in the Community Recovery Act uh, aspects related to provision of branch banking associated also with participation in the affordable housing market. I watched for a year while scenarios were played out in connection with stress testing on that bank, including stress testing that was associated with somebody exercising terminating options that resulted in the murder of a police officer in the same area where within less than two years, five other police officers had been murdered. Just because the hits were called at one bank previously and then the later hit was called at another bank, doesn't mean that it's not still part of the same illegal scheme. So the fact that this notice has its closing of the public comment period 10 days after the other one has its closing of the comment period is not a coincidence. It's also not a coincidence that the other one, the May 7th public comment period, was one month after the FHA released reports connected to the housing market including in connection with an index that I believe is actually compiled with illegally acquired data and data that was compiled in conjunction with fraudulent misrepresentation of the actual housing market, including based upon a fraudulent recharacterization of housing data after reports issued through the Office of Comptroller of Currency had been altered from what was available publicly through the electronic process and through the electronic records at least the two years before. So we've got a very significant situation where there is an effort to try to obfuscate significant fraud and crime that's already been allowed to occur, including in conjunction with an attempt to re-engage in some form of public comment is this because the previous public comments that were offered in good faith actually did reveal crime and a refusal to address it as crime has actually detracted from the capacity for public comments to be considered as a form of recirculation of wealth within the various agencies and departments that are required by law to provide public comment periods in connection with policy changes? Well, if that's the case, it's not only a waste of time and energy to devote the federal government into backtracking and trying to backdate bad securities deals because you refuse to support prosecution of crime, but it also has a capacity to accrue as a detriment, including in areas that it otherwise wouldn't have been connected to unless you're trying to borrow from those other areas in order to offset liabilities that have accrued in areas within which you refuse to prosecute crime as crime. I say this with an understanding that these are very serious and significant matters and that there's a variety of proposed changes that are coming up. To be honest with you, I don't see any difference now in what's going on than what was mentioned nearly if not over 10 years ago by an organization that was already apprised of the situation. But at the same time, there has to be something and to acknowledge on the record right now that this is what's going on concurrent to the other events that transpired over the weekend and that have been going on since the beginning of May. This is a very, very serious matter here. Why was the Federal Reserve 
and the other affiliated agencies that are supposed to be providing regulatory guidance regarding financial policy in this country, including in connection with the floodplain insurance program, obfuscating the actual conditions around which the private flood insurance program was allowed to get to the point that it has. And why are they allowing for it to be coded to the metric 24 through its 24 proposed questions? This is something that has been going on for a very long time and would have been appropriate for prosecution within other areas way before it got to where it is today.